Hey, Sam from 3D here. In this video, I will teach you the basics of box modeling in Blender. This is the second video on our playlist on the basics of this amazing software. As always, you can see the buttons I'm pressing in this corner right here. So let's get started. We are back at the default scene and before we start modeling, I need to teach you the different modes in Blender. Right now we are in object mode, meaning that we can only select and edit objects. We cannot model in this mode. To change that, we need to choose the object that we are going to be modeling on, in this case, this cube, and you can either press the control tab and then select edit mode, or hit over here and change it from object to edit mode. I mainly be using the control tab function just because I'm more used to it. So I'm going to head into edit mode, and now you can see that the cube got all orange. That means that the whole cube is selected. We have three ways of selecting things. We can select the vertices, which are these little lobes, we can select edges, which are the edges, and faces, which are the whole parts. In order to choose what we want to select, you can come he over here on the top and click vertices, edge, or faces. Or just press 1, 2, and 3 on your keyboard. I want to select the face, so I'm just going to press 3 and click on the face. Now that this face is selected, if we press the shortcut G that we used before to grab something, we are going to grab just this face. The same logic applies to vertices and edges. Just remember, grabbing, scaling and rotating, whether it's like this or free rotating, they all work the same way as they did in object mode. Let's say you want to extrude this upwards. There are two main ways of modeling a blender. The first one is using the shortcuts on your keyboard and the second one is using the panel on the left side. I'm way more used to using shortcuts. I'm just going to press E to extrude you can see the arrow already goes upwards. The face will extrude in the direction that it is pointing at. So if it's pointing upwards, it's going to extrude upwards. The same thing goes for this side, right here. Let's say you want to mirror this on the other side. There are a couple of ways of doing this. The first one is you can select everything by pressing A and everything will be selected. Shift D to duplicate, R to rotate. And since it's going to rotate based on the view axis, I want to rotate it on the Z axis, so Z. And then I'm going to type on my numpad 180, like that. And then I'm going to move it right here, so it's correct. That's the way to do it, but it's hassle to do it in this way. I'm going to show you how to use modifiers to make sure we have correct mirror. To use modifiers, head over this right tab and click on the branch icon. Here you will have a bunch of different modifiers. We are not going to get into all of them, but there is quite a lot. I'm just going to show you the mirror modifier on this one. So if you add the mirror modifier, you can see that it works. However, the mirror modifier works based on the origin point. What is an origin point? It's the point where the object is rotated. It's where this little orange dot is located. You can manually change this by selecting somewhere else, like over here, Shift S and then cursor to select. And now in your object mode, you right click set origin and origin to the 3D cursor. You can see that the mirror just moved this side. That's what I was telling you. Just going to Ctrl Z and head to edit mode. And I want the modifier to cut right through the middle. To do that, I'm going to press Ctrl R on my keyboard. And you can see this little yellow line that shows up. It's one of the basics of modeling and I'm going to show you why right now. If I add a loop cut right here and select this face, I can now extrude this. I no longer need to extrude this whole face upwards, so loop cuts are very useful for that. You can also scroll your mouse wheel to add more loop cuts. In this case, I just want one loop cut right down in the middle. I'm just going to click and to avoid this moving this side to side, I'm just going to press the right button. I'm now going to delete everything on the side so I'm going to press 1 to select vertices. And I'm going to press Z to change the way I'm looking at this. You can see there is solid, iframe, material preview and rendered. We are going to tackle material preview and rendering in different video. Right now, just go with the iframe. Now we can see through the mesh. Press Alt A to deselect the loop cut. B for box select and I'm going to select all of this. X for delete and let's delete vertices. Now I'm going to press Z and solid and now we are working mirror modifier. Anything that I do on one side will be done on the other. 
let's explore a little bit of modifier itself. As you can see, we have the axis, which is the axis where it will flip. We can enable more than that. The Y is not showing, but that's because we need to cut it. Let me do this real quick to show you. There we go. See, that's the Y. The bottom one is dizzy and the X is the one we've done before. Let me turn off, we have a mirror object. If we select an object to be in here, that means that the mirror will no longer be done through the orange point, it will be done through the mirror object. Object clipping is enabled to avoid this. So if I press 1 to select the vertex, select this one and move the side. You can see that it can open the mesh. You might not want that, so to avoid that, just click on the clipping. Merge is going to merge this vertex with the other one, the one that is mirrored in the distance right here. The data tab has more advanced features that I honestly never used, so I'm not going to go into them right now. I want to rotate this thing a little bit, so let's select it and press R to rotate it. In order to avoid this deformation, we are going to use something called shear. So let me undo this. And the shear command is Ctrl, Shift, Alt, S. Yeah, it's very long. I show you a little bit how you don't need to remember all of these commands. The shear command works based on the viewing axis. You can sort of constrain it by pressing the axis, but it doesn't really work. So for this to work, I have to look at this directly like this. But you are always going to get a little bit of perspective. In order to avoid that perspective, just press one on your numpad. And that will bring you to a perfect front orthographic, meaning absolutely no distortion of the perspective view mode. Now we can use the shear command, so Ctrl, Shift, Alt, S. And you can see there is no deformation and I get the rotation that I wanted. Similarly to pressing 1 to front, you can also press 3 for the right and 7 for the top. If I press 9, it will go to the opposite, so I'm on top and press 9, I'll get to the bottom. If I'm going in front and press 9, I will get to the back. And if I am on the right and press 9, I will get to the left. If you orbit using the mirror mouse button, you will notice that you will be kicked out of the orthographic view. It says right here, user perspective. If you, for some reason, want to see your object in orthographic, just press 5. I don't, so I'm going to press 5 again. I'm going to show you some more interesting tools. Let's start by inset. So I'm going to select this face and press Y. Y is for inset. As you can see, it creates an inset. I can extend this inwards, maybe even delete the other side. So we have something like a window. Yeah. And if we go around, you can see that this place is empty. This is not very good. Usually want the faces to be closed. To close this, you can just press 2 to select edges. Then select one edge, then the other one and press F to close them. Do this all around. You can probably see that this piece goes beyond this line right here and I don't want to do that. I want it to be straight, just like here. To fix this, I'm going to use something called snapping. Right here, click on this little magnitude, click here and change the vertex. You can also enable that by pressing shift plus tab. I'm going to select vertices I want to move. And I'm going to press G to grab and I want to move them in the Y axis and lock onto that one. Now it's perfectly straight. This line is a little too sharp, so I'm going to bevel it. To bevel something, select and press Ctrl B. And you can see it going up. If you scroll your mouse well up, you will add more subdivisions to it. You can also see that it will glitch if it goes too much. So I'm going to stop at here. This little box will show up. You can click on the box and you can adjust more things about the bevel. I'm just going to leave as it is. I also want to show you the spin tool. The spin tool works based on your cursor. So I want to rotate this face along here. So I'm going to select it and select the edge shift and cure and then select the face. And right here you can select the X axis. So I just click on this plus icon and move my mouse right here. You are going to see all the options for it. You can do 90 degrees or you can do 180 degrees. 
let's go for 120 which is what we are happy for these are the main tools you are going to use while you are modeling and always remember that modifiers are non-destructive you can turn that on and off at any point as well as apply them by selecting this little arrow and clicking apply or pressing ctrl a with the cursor on top of it another really useful modifier is the subdivision modifier accessing by pressing ctrl 1 through 4 you will add the subdivision which is as implied it will subdivide the mesh and move it out be aware that the order of the modifier stack does matter it applies from top to bottom as you can see this has been moved out however it's still blocky you can see the faces in order to fix that select the object press f3 to open up the search menu and you can look so this is what i was saying before if i want to find shear just type in shear and you can see shift ctrl alt s and that will also work to select it so that you don't have to memorize anything so if i go over the edit mode select the face and you can see that these blocky waves because the subdivision is not being applied and this is off you can turn this on for live preview in editing mode i'm going to turn it off press f3 and look for shear and there we go and shear is working to make this thing look a little bit more smooth press f3 and look for smooth object shade smooth just click on that as you can see objects shades and smooth we've done all of that using the default cube how cool is that but if you want to add any other primitive just press shift a and we'll have the add menu we can add lights meshes curves anything you want so let's say you want to add a sphere just hover with the mesh and uv sphere the mesh will be spawned whatever the cursor is. These are the most commonly used tools to do box modeling in Blender. There is also sculpt mode, but that's out of the scope of this video. You now understand how to do some basic modeling. In the next video, we are going to make a simple practice model. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below and join our Discord server. Check out our content at 3D.design. Hit the like button and subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye.